Hello everyone, my name is Jared Beckwith and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys that I figured out how to use an artificial neural network just like this one that I drew here. I was doing a little bit of art guys and then I was like, hmm, you know what, I should probably make a video of this since I was figuring out how to input EEG data into an artificial neural network. I hadn't known how to do that. I've used artificial neural networks in the past, mostly on image data where it's you get a two-dimensional like kind of like grid of pixels and each number corresponds to like a level of darkness for example in a black and white photo i'll throw up an example right here of a number a handwritten digit eeg data is a lot different than picture data so i had no idea how to input eeg data into an artificial neural network just like this one but i finally figured it out now there's not that much stuff on the internet about how to do it, so I thought I'd make a video here and give a nice little demonstration just on a basic way of how to insert EEG data into an artificial neural network and get a prediction whether it's a seizure or not a seizure. So the first step you're gonna wanna do is you have your EEG. So I'm gonna be going from left to right. So first you get your EEG data, whatever that happens to be, and then you have to take the and use an algorithm called the fast Fourier transform. Now that's just a complicated way of saying, you know how we usually have EEG data from left to right, it's in seconds. Now when you take the fast Fourier transform of an EEG data sample, instead of seeing the data as left to right in time, you're gonna see the data in left to right as Hertz. So you're gonna have all the way on the left, your delta, frequency, then you're going to have your theta frequencies, then you're going to have your alpha frequencies, and then you're going to have your beta frequencies all the way on the right. So what do you do with these? Well, you find the area under the curve of the FFT of each of these bandwidths of the EEG signal that you've been looking at. Integral is just the area under the curve of a graph or, or some data. So don't overcomplicate it if you're not too experienced in calculus. I'm not the best calculus person either but I know people who know calculus. So that is the next step. So whatever number you get for the area under the curve of these four bandwidths that as an EEG tech, you're all familiar with these uh, subbands. And then once you get that number, you feed those four numbers that you get as inputs into the artificial neural network. So you got four input nodes. These are kind of like the neurons to the neural network. So you have your four inputs, and then you'll have 20 neurons in your first hidden layer, and then we have, for example, five neurons in your next hidden layer. Now, this neural network architecture, it can vary. This is just one super basic, just for just so I could draw it out and give a, uh, a kind of a basic example. You could have more hidden layers. For example, you could have 20 here, and then you could have 10, and then you can have five, and then you can have the output at the end with the single output node. These little connections, these are kind of like the synapses, if you guys are familiar with neurons. These are gonna be all the different weighted connections. And by training the neural network, you adjust all these different weighted connections, and then hopefully it'll be able to make a good prediction in the output. And then the output we use on the final neuron, we use a sigmoid activation function which will give you a number between zero and one. Now, if you get a number between zero and 0.49, it's not gonna light up and it's not gonna be a seizure. It's gonna be no seizure. Now, if you get 0.5 to one, it's gonna be labeled as a seizure. Now, the final neuron, it's pretty similar to biological neurons, and only this final one it's gonna be an all or nothing phenomenon, especially in a binary classification example like seizure or no seizure. Um, so if it hits the threshold, like if you're familiar with action potentials, they have a certain threshold. Once it reaches the threshold, it has to fire and it's an all or nothing phenomenon. So once it reaches the threshold of 0.5, it's gonna fire and it's gonna say, yes, this is a seizure. Pretty interesting, right? This is good and all, but how do you train this jumbled mess of neurons? How do you know what weights to set for all these different synaptic connections? It's pretty much impossible, right? There's so many connections. How do you know the right weights 
and parameters to set to make it be accurate and be able to label seizures. So we have to train it. And that's going to be done through a training data set with labeled seizures by a doctor. Now, it's very important that the, in the training set that we don't feed the neural network wrong information. So if the doctor labels something as a seizure and it's not really a seizure, let's say the doctor made a mistake and we're feeding that training data into the neural network, the neural network is going to take what you say as truth and you can actually train it to see wrong things as seizures if you have enough wrong labeled training data. So the training data is very important to make sure that it's correct, that you're teaching your neural network the correct things. Luckily for us, most doctors are highly trained. They're very good, especially epileptologists who are specifically trained in labeling seizures, but everybody makes mistakes. And so best case scenario, um, the neural network would be, the training data would be labeled by a team of epileptologists, but I don't know if that's very uh, realistic because it takes so much time to go over so much data and you'd have to have a super big data set. So there's lots of big challenges to perfecting seizure detection. Now, so you feed it training examples of actual seizures and then it goes through and it learns to recognize seizures just like the ones that you fed it. And if you want it to generalize across all different types of seizures, then you have to make sure to train it on all different types of seizures. Any types of seizures that you leave out, it's not gonna be able to recognize it because it has never seen it before. Now during training, we're able to update all these different synaptic weights so that at the end of the day, we create a great seizure detector. So how do we accurately update these weights? So we do that with gradient descent. Now that has to do with derivatives. If you're familiar with calculus, uh, you're kind of looking to find like a local minimum and the way they do that is through an algorithm called backpropagation. Now these are probably just sciencey words that you probably don't need to know too much about, but that there is a way for this to be trained and updated through training data and algorithm called backpropagation. That's just the fundamentals. And if you want to learn more, you I'll, I'll make more videos about it, guys, right? That would be cool. So I just had to make this video because I was really proud of my art and I finally figured out how to take EEG data and feed it into an artificial neural network. This is pretty much my fundamental basic seizure detector, guys. Here it is on the whiteboard. Hopefully by my birthday, July 21st, I'm gonna have it all in code and able to work and detect seizures at a high rate with low false positives that's key because i always see seizure detectors mark artifact as seizure or interictal activity and it's like no no stupid computer so hopefully this is the beginning of me teaching a computer how to read an eeg i'm going to be the master of ai on eeg and that's why i started my company ion eeg if you're interested in using my software my seizure detector in the future, not out yet. Don't worry guys, it will be in the future. This is the uh, fundamentals of it right here. But what I have right now is my EEG activations assistant, which is used on patients in the ICU. You're able to talk to your EEG machine and make annotations with your voice rather than your hands because if you're on the other side of the bed, you can't be typing it into the machine or if you're doing passive eye opening, you can't be typing and doing that at the same time. Label. Right arm stimulation. Annotation saved. So my EEG activations assistant software allows you to just talk to your machine and it'll write all the annotations on the EEG for you. So it's like an artificial auditory cortex. It can hear you process the auditory information and then type it on the EEG. So that's my first thing. I've been uh, collecting information of beta testers. I'm only doing 100 hospitals. I'm about, about at a dozen right now, so there's, there's spots left. Don't worry, guys. And <laughs> But I thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you learned something. I hope it wasn't too much engineer uh, up in the clouds. I try to make things as simple as possible, <sighs> but I might have failed. So if you guys want to see more of this, let me know. Make sure you hit the like button. I appreciate you guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next. I'll be sure to make a video for you all, and I'll see you guys 
on the next one.